So we are finally starting a new unit. This one is going to be detour proofs and midpoints. And if you want to follow along, this is going to be in 4.1 in your books. So our objectives are going to be to use detours and proofs and to apply the midpoint formula. All right, so let's get right into the detour proofs first. So now to solve some problems, it is necessary to prove more than one pair of triangles congruent. And we call these proofs detour proofs. So let's look at the following example. We've got, we're given that AB is congruent to AD and that BC is congruent to CD. And we need to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE. So out of this information that they give us, really only this seems to be useful. Okay, this really doesn't have any bearing on these two triangles that we're trying to prove. But if you look and say, okay, well, how do I prove these triangles congruent? You just don't have enough information to do it. So we have to do what's called a detour proof, where we prove uh, other triangles congruent first, and then use that to help prove the parts of the other triangles that we're trying to prove. So let's actually see how would we, we would tackle this problem. All right, so... Again, we're given that segment AB is congruent to segment AD, and that segment BC is congruent to segment CD, and we have to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE. So, first things first, state your givens. Okay, easy enough. You guys are used to that by now. And the way you tackle this is, do I have enough information for this? We've already decided that we don't. Because we've got one side here, one side here, and we have another side that we could prove by the reflexive property of the two triangles that we're trying to prove, but I've got no way of doing anything with this. So since we can't do that, then we have to look and see what other triangles we have information on. Well, we've got one side here and another side here of these two triangles. So we actually have two sides of the bigger triangles, and we've got this one middle piece that we can say is congruent by the reflexive property. So now we have enough to prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC by side, 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 shown in steps one, one, and two. So now that we have these two triangles congruent, how does that help us? Well, think back to what they gave us that was useful for this. We've got these pair of congruent parts, and actually let me just clear this off so it doesn't get all crazy. We've got these pair of congruent parts here, and we've got these big triangles now that we've proven are congruent. Okay, so again, steps two and three was our detour. And I can say that this angle is congruent to this angle, because they're part of those larger triangles that we just proved congruent, by CPCTC. So now we've got a side and an angle. And think about the ways that we prove triangles. They're side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 hypotenuse, leg. I don't see enough information for us to use hypotenuse leg. Um, there's no statement about 90 degree angles or anything, so that leaves um, side angle side or angle side angle. But side angle side is what wins out here because we've got a side and an angle for each of them. And then we can prove that this is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And now we can say that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE by side angle side steps one, four, and five. So that's an example of when you have to kind of use a detour where you prove some other triangles congruent first and use that information to help you prove another set or another pair of triangles congruent. It sounds confusing, but it's really not anything new. It just requires a little bit more thought. Okay. So there is a procedure for doing detour proofs. And so step one, determine which triangles you must prove to be congruent to reach a required conclusion. Okay, this is what follows the give in, it should be, and says prove or conclusion. You've seen both of those. Okay, so attempt to prove these triangles are congruent. If you don't have enough information to do this, we take a detour. Okay, like we looked at it and we said, okay, we don't have quite enough information to do it. So we had to do our detour proof. Then we have to identify the parts that you must prove to be congruent to establish the congruence of the triangles. And we have to make sure that we consider them all, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 hypotenuse leg if it's a right triangle. Okay. 
Next step, we need to find a pair of triangles that, first, we can prove to be congruent, and second, contain the angles or segments that we need for the main proof. So actually, if you go back, okay, we determined we couldn't prove those, okay, and by proving the larger ones, that had these included angles that helped us out with this one. So we did do that and implicitly state it, that's all. Okay. And then we have to prove the triangles in this step that uh, we decided were congruent. And then use CPCTC and complete the step, the proof from the first step. It sounds really, really confusing, I understand. But you'll get the hang of it. Trust me. All right. And the second part of this lesson is the midpoint formula. So in some coordinate geometry problems, uh, you'll have to figure out the midpoint of a line segment. Midpoint formula can be used to find the coordinates of the midpoint of any segment in the coordinate plane. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's say we have this segment here. We've got point A, and we just give it a generic uh, coordinates, x1, y1. And then we've got um, point B, x2, y2. And then we've got this midpoint, xm, ym. How do we find out where that is? Well, Theorem 22. So if we have A, and that's at x1, y1, and B at x2, y2, then the midpoint M, xm, ym of segment AB can be found by using the midpoint formula, okay, which is this. x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Looks like a lot up there, but basically all you're doing is you're taking this x, adding it to that x, and then dividing by 2. That'll give you that. And then take that y and that y, add them together, divide by 2, and it'll give you that. Not hard at all. So for those of you that favor algebra and this in the geometry seems a little bit hard, this is more right up your alley. So here's something that you can excel at while you continue to struggle through proofs and get better and better at them. Okay, so let's put this in action. Let's say we have a circle with the center O and it has the diameter shown. And I know I don't give you a measurement for the diameter, but I give you two points. We need to find the coordinates of the center of the circle. So we've got our x1, and it really doesn't matter which one you use because you're adding them together. So when you're adding, order doesn't matter. So you can say 6 plus 8, because there's your x, there's your other x, divided by 2, which is 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So that's your x coordinate. And then you take your y's, 2 and 10, and do the same thing. 2 plus 10 divided by 2 is 12 divided by 2, which equals 6. So O is at 7, 6. OK? Easy enough. That's the easy part of the lesson. After giving you detour proofs, figure the second part. Should make it nice and easy for you.